Throughout the history of paleontology, numerous fossils have been discovered that have shaped our understanding of human evolution. While some findings have been relatively unremarkable, others have significantly altered the scientific landscape. Occasionally, a fossil emerges that challenges existing paradigms. One such discovery is a 1.4 million-year-old jawbone. Initially, it was thought to belong to an early Homo species, but now a new groundbreaking study has identified it as something far more extraordinary. What remains of a never-before-seen human relative? A new species that reveals new information in our understanding of the genus Paranthropus, often referred to as Nutcracker Man. But who are the Paranthropus? To fully understand, we have to look into the broader context of early hominin evolution. The story of human origins is a complex tree with numerous branches, each representing a different species, adaptation, and environmental challenge. The genus Homo, to which modern humans belong, emerged at least 2.8 million years ago, with our species, Homo sapiens, appearing around 300,000 years ago. However, Homo was not alone in its journey through time. It shared the landscape with other hominin genera, including Australopithecus and Paranthropus. The genus Paranthropus is particularly intriguing. They are known for their robust skulls, massive jaws, and large molars. These features have earned these hominins the nickname Nutcracker Man. Their physical adaptations suggest a diet that required powerful chewing, likely consisting of tough, fibrous plant materials. Until now, scientists recognized three species within this genus. Paranthropus ethiopicus, Paranthropus boise, and Paranthropus robustus. These species lived between approximately 1 million and 2.7 million years ago, overlapping with early members of the genus Homo. In 1949, a fossilized jawbone designated SK-15 was unearthed at the Swartkrans cave site in South Africa. Swartkrans is itself a treasure trove of hominin fossils, including Australopithecus and Homo species, making it one of the most significant locations for studying human evolution. When SK-15 was first discovered, it was initially classified as belonging to a new species called Talanthropus capensis. However, by the 1960s, researchers began to question this classification. They instead suggested that the jawbone might belong to Homo ergaster, an early member of the genus Homo known for its relatively slender build and more human-like features. This interpretation persisted for decades, with SK-15 being considered an oddity within the Homo lineage due to its unusual thickness and dental morphology. The turning point in the story of SK-15 came with the advent of advanced imaging technologies. In a recent study published in the Journal of Human Evolution, a team of researchers led by Clément Zanoli, a paleoanthropologist at the University of Bordeaux in France, decided to re-examine the fossil using X-ray scans. These scans allowed the team to create detailed 3D models of the jawbone, which revealed both its external and internal structures with unprecedented clarity. What they found was surprising. While the external features of SK-15 bore some resemblance to Homo ergaster, its internal structure told a different story. The thickness of the jawbone and the shape of the teeth, particularly the molars, were inconsistent with those of Homo ergaster. Instead, they pointed towards a different lineage altogether, Paranthropus. The researchers conducted a thorough analysis of SK-15's dental morphology. They focused on the dentine, the dense, bony tissue beneath the enamel that forms the bulk of a tooth. They found that the internal structure of the teeth did not match any known Homo specimen. Instead, it aligned more closely with Paranthropus, albeit with some notable differences. For instance, the molars of SK-15 were smaller and shorter than those of other Paranthropus species, and the roots of the teeth had a different configuration. These differences were significant enough to suggest that SK-15 did not belong to any of the three recognized Paranthropus species. Instead, it represented a new species which the researchers named Paranthropus capensis. The identification of the new species Paranthropus capensis has groundbreaking implications for our understanding of early hominin evolution. First and foremost, it shows that there was significant diversity within the Paranthropus genus. Traditionally, Paranthropus has been viewed as a group of specialized, robust hominins adapted to a diet of tough, fibrous plants. However, the more graceful features of P. capensis suggest that this genus may have been more ecologically flexible than previously thought. 
This discovery also raises questions about the coexistence of multiple hominin species in southern Africa around 1.4 million years ago. At that time, the region was home to at least two Paranthropus species, P. robustus and P. capensis, as well as early members of the Homo genus. The presence of these different species in the same environment suggests that they may have occupied distinct ecological niches, which may have reduced direct competition for resources. For example, P. robustus, with its massive jaws and teeth, likely had a highly specialized diet, possibly consisting of hard, abrasive foods. In contrast, P. capensis, with its smaller teeth and less robust jaw, may have had a more varied diet, which could have included softer plant materials or even some animal resources. This dietary flexibility could have allowed P. capensis to exploit different food sources, giving it a survival advantage in a changing environment. While the discovery of Paranthropus capensis is a significant step forward, many questions remain. One of the key questions raised by this discovery is whether P. capensis represents an evolutionary dead end, or whether it gave rise to other species. At present, this is difficult to determine due to the limited fossil record. However, the possibility remains that there were other Paranthropus species that survived longer than currently known, perhaps adapting to changing environments in ways that we have yet to discover. While it is true that Paranthropus did not give rise to modern humans, the existence of P. capensis suggests that this genus was more diverse and adaptable than previously thought. It is possible that other Paranthropus species, yet to be discovered, survived longer and occupied a wider range of habitats than current evidence indicates. The researchers who identified Paranthropus capensis have called for further testing of preserved specimens of the genus Paranthropus to look for additional fossils of this newfound species. They suggest that other P. capensis specimens may be mixed among the existing collections of P. robustus fossils, particularly those from the Swartkrantz site. By revising these fossil assemblages, researchers may be able to uncover more evidence of P. capensis and gain a better understanding of its place in the evolutionary history of the genus Paranthropus. In addition to re-examining existing collections, future research should focus on exploring other archaeological sites in South Africa and beyond. By expanding the scope of research to include other sites, we may be able to uncover more evidence of the diversity and complexity of our evolutionary history. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the past. If you enjoyed this video on the discovery of Paranthropus capensis, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating explorations into human evolution, ancient mysteries, and groundbreaking scientific discoveries. Your support helps us bring you more in-depth content on the latest research and hidden stories of our ancestors. Stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you in the next episode.